we won't be too long on these conference calls. We're going to have these conference calls. Uh, it's, it's for your benefit to understand how the system works, um, the indicator and the automation. What I want to do tonight uh, is go over um, how we can use automation with the indicator, meaning with the indicator by itself, a lot of you guys use chart trader to get in and out of position. Can we use, when a setup is coming up, can we use automation to do that? Yes. So we have three types of traders that that use the software. One, we have, which is mainly the most of the bulk of the traders, we have uh, traders that are strictly indicator based. They'll see the audible sound go off on the indicator with the momentum setup, and they'll try to use that as a tool uh, to get the edge in the market, whether it be a short or a buy. So it's strictly indicator based. The second way, which the majority of traders are doing this now, which which I w that's when I want to go and do a video, is when they see the indicator coming up with a, a setup, they'll arm or disarm the the automation, meaning let the automation get the entry, get the stop, get the trail, and let it manage the trade. And I think that's a very important topic we need to go over tonight. And then three, you have traders that want full automation, and that is where they do their own analysis of the software through strategy analyzer, back testing, forward testing, all that stuff. So that's the three type of traders we have. Indicator, then using the indicator with automation, and then strictly automation. All right. So let's go over this first of all. This is uh, today's uh, close on the S&P. This is the micros. Uh, but let's go over the, uh, the, the basics of the system first. Um, first of all, we have a bull and bear reading below this oscillator, and then we have our, we got a short setup that came in on the, this is the 130.30. We had a long on the 120.20. I'll show you in a second. But today, what I want to show you is, is that why the algo does what it does. You know, wh how can we project when we use automation or we use the indicator to look for setups? The oscillator below is comprised of four lines, and these workspaces are set up. And with the update, I'll have these set up also for you. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, if – let me get an arrow down here for you. In a nutshell, we're looking for strength or weakness in the market. We're trying to sell the retracement or buy the retracement in an uptrend or sell the retracement in a downtrend, essentially is what we're trying to do. So by doing that, what we can do is we can use the oscillator to help us out. So – what happens is, is if, uh, now you can change these parameters on the algorithm, and I'm going to show you how to do that, but anything below, a, a standard setting for us, anything below 65, this dashed red line, is a bear setup. Anything above 40 is a bull setup. So we, we make it quite simple for the standard settings that, that, that are in there. You can change these settings, which I'll show you how to do. If you want extreme sell setups, sell setups like this, and I'll show you how strategy analyze will analyze this for you and tell you the best possible combinations with the market you're looking at. But if the market's in a downtrend here, right? So if we're in a downtrend, we're moving lower, all right? We're moving lower, and you get a doji. A, a, a doji pops up on our Uni Renko. Now, this is, like I said, a 130.30. I'll show you a 120.20 in a second. But this is today's action at 2 o'clock. So what happens when you get that doji, you get a possible retracement or continuation. What you want to do when that doji comes in, right, the close equals the open and the opening equals the close, or you see a green bar, which is a reversal bar, watch your oscillator down here. Watch the oscillator. What is it doing? Is it pegged below the bear reading right here, which is 65? Or even more importantly, I call these extreme momos, is it pegged below the extreme reading of 20, that little green line? These lines are 20, 40, 65, and 80. If you get the oscillator, if it comes and it doesn't start moving on the retracement, such as this, you see, and this is a trade that we walked through yesterday before the big short. and the oscillator was coming up on the 120.20 and the 113.13. It did not move. You had a reversal bar that came in, meaning a green reversal bar. So if you see this on the indicator, this is when you can turn on your automation. 
you can actually turn on your automation and let the let the entry get in let the algo get in for the entry it'll manage your stop that you have in and it'll manage your trail so you can do that or you can use chart trader and use chart trader to get in whether it be sell the bid sell the ask if you want it because Rinko bars typically retrace 50 percent of that Rinko size in the first four bars if you guys ever noticed that 25 to 50 percent retracement happens so you can actually sell the ask and get a better fill um, sometimes you'll miss trades not too often because the Rinko's usually retrace but the point is is if you what I've been doing in the room is I've been walking through traders like I did Wednesday and say we got a possible short sell set, set up come up and I did that Friday at the close uh, I typed it in before the big big giant run up because what I was doing what, what I do is if you're in a downtrend and you get that first doji it's probably going to be one a continuation or two a retracement so what you want to do is watch your oscillator if your oscillator is pegged below your bear and your bull right are specifically below the bear 65 but I really like it below 20 because 20 is an extreme sell-off all right if that happens you can go to your um, you can go to your your strategies and just click it on one click right and then you can arm your system and then after the trades over you can disarm it it's a really good way to do it because what you're doing is you're qualifying the trade through the indicator and you're going through the strategy now you can do strictly automation which I'll show you in a second is how you want to let this thing just run around the clock but there's limitations that doing that is that you know what if your computer goes down or something happens power goes out all that stuff so you know watching you know I like to educate watching even if you run full automation uh, watching it in the trade is, is is a great idea because a lot of bad things can happen if you just walk away from your computer so that being said you know you can you can see when we're going to have a possible bear setup, bear continuation. It's allowed to come up to 65 threshold. As long as it doesn't jet through 65 by the time we get pulled in, right, then it's still a valid setup. So let's say that you get this reversal bar here and you get this doji and you turn on the automation and you get your preset automation in, which I'll show you the settings in this here in a second. But let's say that you, you see this oscillator and it keeps retracing, goes higher, 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 and it busts right through 65. Then guess what? Don't turn on your automation. Don't don't click on it. You know because what it's telling you is there's strength in the market. It's no longer a momentum trade. So it's a great way for traders to use automation, the indicator together. I'll show you how we do this with zones on shallow zones and so on. Um, it's a great way to do it because you can let the computer do the work for you. And I was showing traders Wednesday on that big 20 point short that the automation got because it managed the trade all the way down. You know, traders just, it's hard for them to do that. It's hard for them to stay in a trade. That's why automation works so well. But what you can do is you can use a bear and bull reading to assist you when to get in and out of the markets. So you can select automation when there's a possible setup coming up based upon your bull bear reading. And, and this is specific to these default settings. Bear is below 65, and bull is above 40, okay? So by doing that, let, let's just go over the standard bear short. So that's a bear short. Listen, I don't care how much strategy analyzer you run. I don't care how much back testing you do. The top shorts are going to be extreme. It's going to be extreme, below at least 20 or 40 for bulls, I mean bears, and above 65 to above uh, 65 and up for for bulls meaning this is the this is the uh, weakest part of the market when this oscillator just pegs south right here below 40 and 20 that's the weakest part of the market the strongest part of the market will be at this level up here okay so that's your strongest part it's allowed a bear a bulls allowed to come down and touch 40 and go up it's allowed to come up and touch bear 65 and go down. Let's take a look at the next one. Just so you get in a, in a, um, a mode with this. So this is a, what's called a bull buy. So let's let's say you're in a hard uptrend and the oscillator is pegged and you're trading off of, let's just say this wrinkle, wrinkle size. And we're pegged. We're rally, rally, rally. Once you see an extreme rally like this, 
there's an insufficiency in the market. And when there's an insufficiency in the market, is typically when you get shallow retracements and you get continuations. So as soon as you see this doji come up, two things are possibly going to happen. One is you get a continuation to the upside, or two, you're going to get a retracement, right? So a, continu a continu continuation to the upside will be a tweezer where you get two back-to-back -do -back dojis, and then you get a hard continuation to that move. A retracement, once that comes up, you can arm the system right there when that doji comes up because, A, you definitely want to get in a tweezer trade if it's insufficiency in price for continuation. B, you want to get involved in the retracement and let it pull you in. So when you're watching that retracement and that doji comes up and you're retracing, right? and this is for those who do not want to fully automate. These are ones that want to use the automation with the indicator. It says nothing to do with full automation. If you want to run full automation, I'll show you how to back test that too. But what I'm saying is for those that want to use automation because you don't stay in trades. This is for traders that get nervous. Traders that don't keep their stops in. Traders that move their stops. Traders that don't let the runner run. And traders do, that cannot manage a trade as well as the computer can. So if you see a red reversal bar and we're coming down, right, the oscillator it has to stay at least above what? It's got to stay at least above 40. Right here, the bull. Stay above 40. So if I'm coming down, I see that first red bar print. Right? I even like doing it with the doji. If that doji prints, you can turn on the automation. Because the automation on, especially a 130 or 125, 120, you don't get a lot of noise. Right? A 113, it's you get a lot of noise on it. But you don't get a lot of noise on, on these larger Rinkos. So as we pull back, and I like to see it if there's a big insufficiency in price, though. If I see a big move up or a big move down, you're looking for, A, a tweezer. Automation should be turned, can, can be turned on. Or, B, a retracement automation should be turned on, and you get that follow-through. Okay? The key is to watch. Let's go to the next one. Here's a bull. This happens a lot. I call this is a J-hook. I see J-hooks all the time. I nickname the J-hook because it looks, looks like a little hook pattern, right? You see this little hook? Looks like a hook pattern. You'll see this a lot with the indicator and oscillator and how the strategy likes to get these trades. So you can spot these. So let's say that we're moving up, right? And we're moving up. And I'll show you how we add the zones. This is the Momo trader right now. This is the Momo, um, the updated Momo, which I'll show you. But um, if you look, once I get that doji right there, that doji, I'm thinking two things. One, I have a push to the upside. All right, this is after a bit, uh, a surge up. I'm, th I'm thinking a push to the upside with a uh, with a um, with a tweezer, a double doji, and then entry. Or I'm looking for a retracement. So the it can be armed at this level if the oscillator stays where it wants to stay. So once you arm it, and that oscillator does not pull back below 40, if it holds above 40, let it go. If you want to use automation, let the automation pull you in the trade. A lot of traders can't trade this from 41.25 to 41.36. It's a 13-point run on the on the on your last runner. So a lot of traders can't hold for 13 points. They get nervous, or they they they, they don't have their chart trader adjusted, or they 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 don't know how to trail. Well, that's how automation can help you. Using the indicator with automation. It's trade management, all right? So you can you can do that through strategy and automation. That's full automation, Phil. I'll, I'll go over that in a second. Yep. What you'll do, I'll show you in a sec, Phil. That's a great question, but one sec. I'm showing traders how they can get in and get out of the market with indicator and automation. But, yes, you are correct. So what, I'm, what you want to do then is that when you see a big push in the market, up or down, watch your oscillator. And use the automation to help you out. Let's go to the next one. This is a this is a bear short. So the bear short. Why is it such a, a, a nice possible move? Listen, the market's very easy to understand. It can only do two things. It goes vertical or it goes sideways. It's very simple. Either we're vertical where we're taking buy stops out, or we're going south, we're taking sell or sell stops out, or it's going sideways, which is chop. Don't make it any more difficult than that. 
So what happens is, is that when you see the market get insufficient, uh, an insufficiency in price, that means it's going vertical. This is where our order blocks come in. An order block would come in right here in the room because there's an insufficiency in price, right? So that's major resistance. So my point is, is that when you see a big move, the first doji that comes up, the first one that comes up, you either think, A, it's going to be another doji back to back and a continuation, or B, it's going to be a, what? It's going to be a retracement, and in that retracement, it's going to be a bear sell. So the oscillator is allowed to come all the way up until 65, but when you, if you run strategy runners, many times I run strategy runner, and you back test this, many times I back test and forward test this, and you optimize this, your optimal time for shorts is going to be below your 40, 40 bull right there, shorts. Below 40 and above 65 for bulls. All right? That's your optimal time, optimal uh, area to look for. So when this oscillator is shooting back up on a retracement, arm that you can arm the automation, arm it. Click on it once. It comes on in one second or less. You know, depending on your speed of your system and so on. But you know, it comes on pretty much instantaneously when you click it, and it arms it. Right? If you go to, you keep the strategy on here, and you click enable. Right? So it's just one click. Click. Once it clicks on and then you're good to go and then you have to make sure it turns green so if it right when it turns green there you are and you are enabled right so you can do that based upon arming the system based upon if you want to use indicator with automation but the key is this when you're watching this oscillator and you're watching it watch the overall retracement right make sure that uh, the retracement if it shoots right through the bear a 65 it's probably not a good thing to uh, you know to be shorting the market because the market showing strength now let's take a look at inside of the algo and I'm going to show you how we can do this so like Phil just said you can just simply put bear below 65 and bull below 40 right and you can do that with the updated software that you guys are going to be getting so in other words if it jets through 40 on a pullback buy it's not going to it's not going to uh, fire in the trade because I have thresholds here you can put in. Bear 65. This bear bull line, when you put it in, just make sure that you understand that it, it, it will give you more trades or less trades depending on where that is. So make sure that bull bear, when you optimize, you don't have to use a standard of 7 as your line to use for your bull bear reading. Right? It's very sensitive. If you just want to take a couple trades during the day, you can you can pump that all the way up if you have strategy analyzer to, to 21. You only look for a couple setups a day below bull and bear setups. So when you optimize this and you want to optimize your bull bear readings because the, the 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 algorithm will look to get print trades based upon your bull bear, right? So you can change these levels though. I just said the most optimal settings are above or below uh, 65, I mean uh, below for cells would be below your 40 and above 65. If you really want extreme levels, go, go bear below 10 and bull above 90. What is that telling you? That's telling you that you're looking for strict uh, bull or bear blow off sell offs. I mean you're below the 10 threshold and you're above the 90 for buys. What does that mean? You're in a very, very hot market. The market it has a major insufficiency in price, and if there's, since there's a major insufficiency in price, you're going to see uh, real small pullbacks in the oscillator to get us in. So, But if you want to take more trades, right, you can come all the way down for bull at 20 because it's still a bull bear of 80-20. It's got to stay below 80 on the bear. That's your standard oscillating market, 80, below 80, above 20, and it, it, the market likes to rally and sell off from there. But you can, you can get into extreme readings 
by even going higher. You can go bull 95, 95, and bear 5. That's where the market is just pegged. It's pegged in one direction and so on, okay? So when you're doing targets and so on like that, I'm going to show you how you can optimize targets and stuff with Strategy Analyzer tonight, but when you're doing targets, you know, you can put whatever targets you guys want to put in. I, I use standard on longer Renko bars, 12, 24, 36, 1,000. The stop I put way out there, it's a 30 Renko bar. If you use a 30 Renko bar, you need the size of the Renko bars your stop, period. So if you use a 30 Renko bar, you have to at least use a 30 Renko stop because you want the, 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 the Renko bars, it, it's going to fluctuate in between there that many ticks. All right, so if you use a 20 Renko, then you can use a 20 stop. If you use a 13 Renko, then you can use a 13 tick stop. But I'd like to go least least at it, or I go five, or sometimes 10. I put the stop way out there because my trail is going to be lower anyway than my stop. So wherever the trail is at, that is where it's going to stop you out. So this, I just have trail of 30, meaning it's going to trail the high of these bars, the low of these bars after a setup. And it's going to fire me out on all four contracts. I mean, uh, 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 anytime it hits 30, it's going to get out. Now, if you want to take a, a tighter trail, like a tighter ATR, let's say you want to arm the system for a setup, but you want to keep it real tight. Let's say if you have a 20, you're trading off of a 13 Renko bar. Then make your trail tight. You know, you want to do 13 or 14. So you can put 13 or 14 or even 15, two ticks above your bar size, Renko bar size. And what that says, if I don't hit my first target, uh, 12 ticks, then it's going to trail and it's going to get me out of ATR 15 on the high of that Renko bar, just, just above outside that Renko bar. So this trail one means it coincides with the target one. So it's gonna, it won't stop you out on all these contracts at all as long as it doesn't break the 15 trail. If target 224, you can loosen your trail up. You can loosen it to you know, 28 if you want. Now, your trail is trailing until it hits 24 ticks. That's your ultimate stop, the 28. Then as we go for the third target, it will go for the third ATR. So let's say you want that at 36. Keep that 36. As it moves along, as long as we don't break that, you're good to go. And your ultimate target, if you, have, if you want to put out the 1,000 ticks on your last target four, put it out there to like 63 if you want. Now it's saying... It's going to run, run, run until it breaks that last threshold. If it violates the first threshold at all, meaning the first ATR, all these get stopped out. All right. So if you noticed what I was showing you here a second ago was that it will, um, it, your targets are based upon your first target. So as it's trying to get to the first target, if the trail gets hit first, that's your ultimate stop. So it's the best. It's it, it's the best of both worlds. It, you can it's either going to hit your stop first or your trail first. So I put the stop way out there because we really don't even need a stop with this algo because the trail is what's going to kick us out anyway. As soon as it closes outside the trail, it will exit the positions. Okay. So if we go forward in here now, let's go to what Larry's talking about about the software you currently have. So the software you currently have is this. Let's say you want to start taking trades on you want to arm this okay larry so you see this you, larry do you understand the setup at all by chance do you understand the bull bear concept do you understand staying below 65 uh, uh, for bear above 40 are, are we on the same page with that make, make sure you're good so if you're below 65 we're looking for bear setups bull above 40 all right so if you want the software you have until you guys get the update all right so here's what we can do what you can do is we don't we you want to keep bull bear unchecked. You don't have this, so this is unchecked. All right, so let's take a look with the software you have, how to get in a setup like this. The software you have, so the the update you're getting in, in it, it allows you to do this, right? So let's look at the difference in the software you have now and the update you're getting. The update you're getting has this bull bear toggle switch. So let's let's clarify it. Let's clear things up here right now. That's the bull bear toggle switch. If you click on that, that overrides the software you currently have right now, the settings. All right? 
So when you get this, you have a choice of keeping the software that you have now on the settings that you have. Some traders have settings that they enjoy using right now with the software they have. So I, I made it so it's one or the other. If you click the bull bear toggle switch, then you can put in your thresholds, the bull and bear and the line and so on. Okay? If it's unchecked, it's going to go to the standard settings that you have in your system. So, I mean, in the, you have in your hands. If you want to take a trade where you want to toggle it on and let the computer manage your trades, that's why we're having this the whole discussion. If you want to manage your trades, because some traders can't hold and, and manage all these, because these ATR trails are nice, the entries are nice, stops are nice, it works really, really well for, order, uh, for managing your orders. So let's say you want to get short here with the software you have. The, the current software you have, you can't dictate where the bull bear line is. Okay, but what you can dictate is if it's a shallow retracement or a larger retracement. Well, the easiest thing for you to do is, is just increase your retracement size. So your relative retracement size, you will just increase. So if you're looking for a setup, and this is for traders who just want to get in and out of the market and use this automation for your automation. If you put this to zero, Larry, to retracement strength to zero, then it will not take this trade. Why? Because after all the conference calls that we've done on the software you have, zero is for what? For dojis only. It's for continuations only. So if you put zero, it's not going to take that trade. Right? So you need to increase your retracement level. If you want to take every single bull bear trade and let the system um, automate, automate it, meaning um, for, your, uh, for your computer automation and let the uh, computer manage your trade for you, then we need to widen for a wider retracement. You just widen your retracement strength. All right. Most continuations, all right, most continuations are or shallow retracements. You really don't want to get in trades anyway if they're really a large retracement because then it's an FCR. So it's not a MOMO trade, right? So what you can do is you can dictate what retracement you want. Now you can use market replay to see, you know, or or you can put it on here when the retracement comes up or what have you. But as long as you increase that retracement strength, right? And if you want to take all trades, depending on the retracement strength, just so it's not an FZR, because remember, you'll be watching the oscillator to make sure that it's not getting above the bear or below the bull. So, you know, you can put 10. You know, 10 is a nice, is a, is a deep retracement, but you will get momos on 10. And momos come up all the time on 10. But if you go all the way down to zero with the current software you have, it's not going to take these trades when a bull bear reading comes up. So what you can do is if you put a 10, now it's telling you, and then what I would do also is I would use the trend, if the software you have, use a trend filter. You know, some of you guys want to use, um, I use a 20, a 110 a lot. I have 11, 21 standard, but you can even put whatever moving averages you guys want to use to make sure you're in the right scope of trend, you know, 20, 50, what have you. But I would use a trend filter on uh, since you, you're not putting specific bull and bear readings in. And then, you know, when this retracement comes up, it will fire in this trade and it will automate just like it does every, everything. The only main difference in the update, and this is it, the main difference in the update is this, is you can dictate where the bull bear reading is or it won't take the trade. So with the software you have and you're watching the indicator, because the indicator does what? The indicator and the oscillator, they work together. So if you see a doji that comes up and you want to arm the system, make sure that your retracement strength is higher. That's the only difference in between the software is that you can dictate where the bull bear is on the update, put the exact numbers in you want. If not, you just need to increase your retracement size to get into that type of setup. All right, so when you do, when you do that and... Um, as far as the entry goes, it's going to do the exact same thing, you know, that um, that the other one did. It took the exact same trade right here, right? It took the exact same automation trade that the update will give you. You just got to increase your retracement strength, Larry, if that makes sense. Now, the update, it's a little bit more fine-tuned, a little bit more updated because now you can put specific numbers in. Does that make sense? Are, are, are you clear on that? You got to increase your retracement strength if you want to let the automation get you in and manage the trade. Now, let's take this another step further. Let's go to um, Strategy Analyzer, all right? 
So let's say that you want to look for strategy analyzer and you want to find um, and you want to find specific settings or what have you. So when you do this, you, you have to go here first. Let me get this out of the way. Hold on a second. So go to tools. No, wait, hold on one sec. There it is. There it is. Go to new. Sorry, new. Go down to strategy analyzer. Just click it once. I want to show you a couple things so you're doing this the correct way. It's going to come up. Strategy analyzer will come up. You want to go to the program that you want to go, right? You want to go to the program that you want to see. So the one year, the update you're going to get in is JTrader 2, which is the the updated bull bear script. But um, or the what you have right now, you can put it in there. Put your, I think it's called Simmomo, what Gerald named Simmomo. So JTrader is just the same thing as Simmomo. We just changed the name for the for the sim. This is for my records. But when you do this, you don't want to go back test. You want to go in here and you want to go optimization. So when you click optimization, here's a couple key things when you're when you're doing a strategy analyzer. All right. When you're doing it, you don't know if the bull bear line is if that's the specific level that you want to have. So I like to go one and I like to put 20 in. I like to do a big range. And Phil and I talked about it a little bit more sophisticated way of doing this on something down the road here, but let's just go for this here also. So here you want to do the bull bear, go 1 to 100. Go see what the, what the threshold would be. Bull, go to 1 to 100. All right, 1 to 100. All right, now what you're doing is you're saying, hey, what's the best bull reading for the specific bar type that I'm using? And what's the best bull line? And it will spit it out. So let's go back to what I did here. So I just ran this week. Um, what was this? The last, yeah, this week, because I don't want to run this thing all day on our conference call. But it takes typically around, not unless you do short durations like this. You'll see, and I'll run it here in a second. You'll see how quick it is. If you run about a month to two months, three months, it starts, when you hit run, it's going to be about 25 seconds, and then you're going to see a big green bar down here. I'll show you in a second how, how it works. And it's going to run down here. But what you want to do is when you're doing this, I put 2 to 20. So what it did is spit out this week on the 130.30 Rinko, it said 13 was my best bull bear line to use. It said my best bear was 95, which we know this. I, I, I talk blue in my face that extreme momos are very, very important. Extreme bears are very important. And the bull was 98. So what it basically said is 95 and 98, it said this. It said the bull was, or was it, 98. It's all the way up here. 98 bull. That means the oscillator can't pull back below this line. So it's got to get above this line, and on the retracement, it can't pull back more than that. And then my bear was 95. So my bear was all the way down here. I mean, I'm sorry. My bear was, oh, um, it was 95. 95 all the way to, well, it's, it's pretty close to it. So um, basically it said that the bull was extreme blow-off rallies, and the bear was extreme blow-off sell-offs. Right? So when you do this, hold on one sec, let's get back into this. Um, I put you can put the trend up false or true, but what it'll do, it will find you can put your moving averages the same way. You can put it in, let's say that you like uh you can go all the way from let's say start from twelve to one hundred. Right? Find the range that you want and it will spit out the best results based upon that. Now strategy analyzer isn't an exact science. I mean, we it, those of you that know strategy analyzer, it's not exact science, but it gives you a, a great place to, to to look at where your bull and bear readings are and so on. Um, your targets, I kept it in at 12, 24, 36, and 1,000, but again, put 12 to 20 or 24 to, to 
50 or 36 you know I have it here so it can run quickly and th when you do this uh, you can do your start time this is from 9 30 11 um, we all know that um, that I talk about I talk about the uh, 9 30 to 11 and the three o'clock to uh, to four o'clock we see a lot of these setups that's called power hour so a lot of traders uh, institutional traders per se they will put most of their positions on at the last hour of trading and on or off and the same thing in the first hour and a half of trading so you can dictate what time you want the trader to to to, to take setups just make sure that you put the time if you're going to automate this thing to turn on and turn off make sure your time is in that time period or it will not take the trade all right and then here's the trail you know i put the trail from 20 to 63 20 to 63 20 to 63 20 to 63 I, I put it out there because I'm using a 30 Rinko bar, and you can change these how you want to change it. But it said the best one for my first 12 ticks is a 25 trail, 24 ticks is a 28 trail, hitting my 36 ticks is a 57 trail, and my last trail with the thousand ticks out is 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 46. And then the bull bear to true. So if you want to run the software you have currently under Strategy Analyzer, you do the same exact thing I'm doing here, exact same thing. So when you run it. All right, it's going to spit out these levels. I mean, these numbers are going to tell you the total number, number of trades. So if I look at this real quick, I can see I don't like the 100% one right away. I like the second one. The second one looks really good to me because it's a less percentage, but look at the number of trades in the profit factor. Yes, the profit factor is 99, but look at my drawdown. And this is four contracts on the large contract, the S&P, this week. So that's 38 trades, 86%. I like this better than all these guys because... I like the drawdown, I like the profit factor, I like the percentage, but more importantly, I like the largest winning versus largest losing trade. My largest winner was 925, my largest loser was 187.50, all right? And when you go into this then, you can sort of take a look at it and go to trades then and sort of get an idea of your drawdown. So if we start out here, you're, you can see the profit, you can see the profit as it accumulates. Uh, so this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good settings for um, you know obviously that you can work off of and, and and further test it, market replay it, test it the last two, three, four months or so, and then really get an idea how this setting can go. But you can tell that this is a really good starting point, and how we did it was was we did it through Strategy Analyzer. Now, when you scroll down, here's the key to Strategy Analyzer is if you don't want this thing to run forever, right, make sure you go down and you click, first of all, you want to optimize data series, uh, you want the optimization on max profit factor. I found this to be the best one on Strategy Analyzer to use, um, to each his own, uh, you know, but optimizer, make sure you change to genetic from default or this thing's going to run forever, all right? So, it, yes, that it will give a little bit different results but they're pretty close um, and it's just faster it's a faster way to speed through uh, this market analyzing if you go default it's gonna it's gonna bog your computer down it's gonna take quite some time so I always like to run optimizer on genetic that's the key when running strategy analyzer is it if you don't want it if you want to be in front of your computer and let it just bog itself down the genetic is a really good way to do it um, I leave everything else the same I do put it on 24 hours the start date when you're doing the June contract, you can't go back further than March the 20th because that is the contract rollover, right? So when you're doing that to get accurate results, um, you know, make sure you do that, okay? You can change your Rinko size. You know, I got it. I don't, this is the 12020 on this. So the 12020 this week with these settings, these settings plugged in 12, 24, 36, 1000, stop 40. 35, 41, 60, 30 ATR with my bull bear reading of these levels. Uh, 91, I'm sorry, the, the, the bull is 18, the bear was 91, sorry. Um, but at that level on this one, see it changed. See, see, look at this. Look how this one, if you click on it, it gives you different optimizations where this one, which I like the best, it said any bear below 91, any bull above 18, right? And then it gave me my, I, put, I had trend defaults. You can change that to true and put your moving averages in there. 
But when you click bull bear to true, it's going to ignore the, these are the retracement strength, this, the signal strength. Um, that's if you click bear to false, then it'll go with the program you have. You can optimize the program that you have. All right, so that's a great way to do it uh, because if you give if you give large ranges, and then you can go down to smaller ranges and even do that. Now, what I do like to do, I like to run the optim optimizer quite over. So I'll jot these down. This looks really good to me. 38 trades this week. You know, obviously past performance is not indicative of future results. But 38 trades this week, 86%, good profit factor. I want to I want to jot these settings down. I like any bear 91, 18. So when you click it, you can run again. And when you click it, when you run it, it's calculating. So what it'll do on the bottom right, you're going to see it turn green. Now, I didn't go back too far because, obviously, we're already at 45 minutes on this conference call. But you see how it's running through it. All right. And then I can come up here and look. All right. So now I, I want to see this one. Let's see. See, this is 77%. Prop factor 6.31. Let's look at the settings, though. You know, your, your bull's 422. We're getting the same reading on the bull bear line, the three, I mean, the last one. And you can just sort of go through here and see where the bull bear line, the average is. You know, it's been two to three. It looks very popular on getting these type of results. So th these results look really good again. And if I look on it, if I take a look, I have the same profit targets. I got now my, my ATR trails have changed. So 30, 31, 21, 24, and a 20. So as you move that along, I kept the stop the same. This is how you start optimizing now. Now I'm getting a feel for what what worked this week you know what's a good drawdown well what's a good uh, you know profit target and so on and that's how you can use strategy analyzer to your benefit by getting starting points so if i click run again and i'll run this thing uh, because you, the thing with strategy analyzer is you're going to get different results right so it's not every, the results aren't going to be the same exact ones every single time i'll run it 10 to 20 different times on a 120 20 or 120 25 and just to see, you know, this is something where, yeah, it's 100%, but look at the number of trades, four. I don't want that. I, I, I want to see the ones that take more trades. Like the one that took 38 trades, I like that even better, so I won't even look at this. I'll keep it going. I, I, I want it to trade, you know, 40, 50, 60 times, you know, depending on my profit objectives and so on, uh, not unless you're position trading. it. So you run it again, and again, you can see, this level so my first run my first two runs was my best runs that I had on my levels and that's how you can do it you can print them out jot them down and then what you can do going into your next run use those as your what I like to do and this is you can do how you want to do it I like to take all these different runs like this is a good run for me right here I like this 11.69 profit factor right I got my bear at 100 my bullet 3 bull bear line 20 so what I'll do, when I jot these numbers down and I jot my ATRs down, I'm trying to find a pattern here. You know, what, what on all these runs that I'm running, if, 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 if my ATRs have been running consistently, which they are, you can see they're between 30 and, uh, 30 and 60 now. I don't see hardly any 20s in here. You can start on your next run, put 30 to 60 threshold. You can narrow it down even more under your trail when you optimize. Because this is a nice little run. It's got a very small drawdown with four contracts, at 13, 30 winning trade, 87, and so on. So if I look at it, you can see why it's trailing really nice. So that's what it did actually today. This is today's trades. It caught a really nice short. Um, I think that's today, isn't it? Uh, May say 23rd. No, this is a couple days ago actually. So this is the 23rd, um, but you can see it's trying to catch the runners on these. And you can see what type of trades it's doing in between. Now, I have this thing running in between what? Power hour. Look at the times I'm running it. I'm only running it from 9.30 to 11. So let's say I take this and I want to go to 3. I want to go 3 o'clock. Watch this. We go 3 o'clock, another power hour. I go 3 o'clock. And I go to 4 o'clock, which should be 1,600. Uh, no, 3 o'clock would be, I'm sorry, 12, 
13, 14, 1500. So let's look at the next power hour, 1500 to 1600. Now the next power hour. So you can see the power hour is where you get a lot of volatility. That's why I like to run these strategies. And it, let, let's say you're just running the indicator by itself and using chart trader. Fine. The best optimal time is 930 to 11. The best optimal time is 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Period. Why? That's where power hour is. Power hour is composed of two times. It's where the most volume is in the market. It's between 930 to 11, and it's from 3 to 4. So when you're running strategies and you're looking for setups, wouldn't it be ideal for you to even run the strategy when you run these strategies, not 24 hours a day, but even run them on the power hour and so on. So let's see. So obviously power hour is really good on this one, 81%, uh, you know, as far as with these settings in here, uh, good this week. So let's see at 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Uh, let's see at 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock we have any consistency like we did in the morning session because we had some good runs with the strategy analyzer this week on the morning sessions. And that's what you can do. You can see what, what dictate. So really, on the if you look at power hour, at the uh, uh, the volume is being dominated in the morning. I mean, morning is where the volatility is. Look at this. Not a lot of trades. Run it again. So you can tell in the power hour from 3 to 4, is that where you're going to find a lot of setups in this market? Is it conducive to this market environment? No. What's conducive to this market environment is 9.30 to 11. Let's do it again. Make sure we're good. Once again, look at the trades. Four. That tells you right there as a trader, alerts you that what I want to do is I want to be focusing on power hour 9.30 to 11. So you can break it down in times also. It's a neat way, you know, how you can do it and so on. All right.